What's good, people? So, it's been about a week, or no, two weeks actually, since, since I broke my last fast. And yeah, today's October 6th. I broke my fast on the 23rd of September. So, as you can see, all the weight comes back, the voice comes back, the strength comes back, everything comes back. But people still, people still uh, lose their minds. It's kind of funny to watch people squirm a little bit, and I do say funny because it is—it's—it's it's quite comedic, actually. But people can only see what's right in front of them. They let their outer circumstances dictate their inner conditions, when in fact it should be the other way around. When in fact it actually is the other way around. It's just not uh, realized that your inner condition is actually producing your outer circumstance. It's—it's it's primarily a matter of the subconscious mind which over many, many lifetimes, incarnations, gets filled with a lot of shit. And so that's why when things seemingly happen at random in our lives, we, we don't consciously understand why it happens. But that could have been something, that could have been some imagery from who knows, just kind of resurfacing itself or, re or even resolving itself in terms of karma. Karma is really just a matter of imagery, attachment to imagery. That's what karma really is. And karma is intrinsically tied with reincarnation, you know? So, but anyway, doing well. The first week of after the fast, um, I was very fatigued, I was very tired, I was sleeping a lot, but I was sleeping quite easily, and that's something that I've had trouble with in the past. Um, insomnia was something that w was one of the health issues that um, I've been overcoming and this last fast really really helped that I think that that was definitely one of the key areas my body's been been working on um, sleep has been coming much easier to me and this past week I've been getting my strength back so first week I've been you know, it was really just a matter of kind of refeeding, recovering, I guess, rehydrating. And then this week has just been kind of, you know, re, you know, getting that strength back, you know, like my appetite's really coming back um, fully and that sort of thing. Feeling good, feeling strong, emotionally pretty balanced, you know, just very at peace, you know, very content. Contentment's crucial. Contentment is actually a virtue, I would say. Um, and I don't mean complacency. There's a big difference between complacency and contentment. Most people are complacent, but very discontent. You know, they're discontent and they're complacency. I say, be content with, uh, you know, just be content. Contentment, really crucial for true joy and happiness and levity in your day-to-day -day life. That's really what it's about. Fasting is like not a serious thing to me, you know? People take it seriously, like, oh, I'm fasting. It's like so spiritual, and oh my God. I, it's like a comedy, you know what I mean? Like when, when I stopped eating food, like I went out, I did not swallow any, I didn't ingest any food or liquids for nine fucking days. I should be dead several times over, according to most people, the medical community. The medical community, which, who most, most of these fucking doctors would just be better off digging ditches, you know? Because they're the ones putting people in ditches. That's what I said. It's com it's, a, it's just a comedy. It's a big circus. This whole planet is just a big fucking circus. That's all it is. And detachment is really about levity to me. It's not about being cold or uncaring or indifferent. Um, it's about seeing things from a, a heightened, uh, uplifted point of view. So detachment, contentment, upliftment, levity, uh, levity and humor and all these things go hand in hand. So this is what spirituality really is about. It's not a serious thing. Spirituality, it, it's kind of funny. It's like a dichotomy because spirituality is a priority to me, but I don't take it seriously, you know? So swallow that one. I don't, spirituality is a priority to me, but I do not take spirituality seriously because anything that you take seriously, you're not gonna enjoy it. Have you ever been happy and serious at the same time? Ask yourself that. Have you ever been happy and serious at the same time? There's too much serious behavior in the world. People just walking around miserable with uh, sticks up their butts, you know? For what? I catch myself doing it, but then I'm like, why? 
Why am I acting serious? There's no point. There's no point. At the human level, there's enough negativity in this world. And not, not to say that you should never be affected by it or you can never be affected by it. I guess it's possible to have, you know, some perfect life, I guess, where you're never affected by negativity, but very, very, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that, but that's a very individual thing. But we do live in a world with a lot of negativity, so why uh, adding to that or being a part of that is just a waste of time to me. You know, what's the point of getting out of bed in the morning if you're just going to walk around all serious and just not, you know, not able to laugh? I say the key to spirituality, the key to joy and happiness, is, which is what spirituality really is about, true joy and true happiness, contentment, is uh, just relaxing, learning to relax and just learning to laugh at things. You know, learning to laugh at things more. And I see my life more and more as time goes on just as kind of a, a comedy, a sitcom, a perpetual ongoing comedy sitcom, like a Monty Python movie or something, you know, but, um, but even funnier because it's, it's more real. So or it's more uh, more intimate, I should say, more experiential, like for me, on an individual basis. And it's very much individual. It's very much about balance, too. When people say finding balance, you got to find your own balance. What does it mean to you? That's really what it's about. Spirituality is about the, uh, the individual sojourn of the soul back to its true home. And the body, you know, in the in the heart of God, as I say, or heaven, you know, as, as maybe the religions call it, but the religions don't get people very far, unfortunately. Not that I criticize people who are religious or anything, but I grew up Catholic, so I was a part of that for a while. I used to be very critical of religions. I went through a, a quasi sort of almost atheistic phase, and then I came out of that, and I realized that we are the creators, you know? We're the creators. We create everything we experience. We create all the people that we encounter, all of our dealings, all of our encounters, our experiences are simply um, a result of our, of, our, of our making, you know, we are the cause. You needn't, you want to find the primary cause in your life, in your, in your experience, each and every moment, each and every day, just look in the mirror. There is no cause outside of yourself. There's no cause outside of yourself. There's no secondary cause. There's no such thing as a secondary cause. You are the primary cause. And once you take ownership of that, and once you come to that true realization like I have, things become very, uh, very, <laughs> very light. Very, uh, you feel very, li I just feel very liberated, you know, in spite of what happens out here. My, like my life on the, on, in, in, the out, in the outer world, you know, things out here could be total chaos. I can care less. Because it's all temporary. It's all gonna. It's all changing anyway. That's the only constant out here is perpetual change in, in motion, if you will. But that inner space, that inner space, where in soul dwells, which is our true eternal self, our essence. That is un that's unchanging. That's eternal. And we as soul, our true selves. We are a happy, positive, pure positive, I should say, uh, joyful entity, endowed with the, with the virtues of compassion and patience and um, contentment, ascetics, you know, nobility, all these things. And the more we focus on our true essence in spirit as soul, the more we just become naturally our good, and the more we become naturally good. But a lot of people make the argument because of all the negativity that, well, is man inherently evil or bad or selfish or greedy or whatever? And these are all things that, these are kind of like uh, mind viruses, if you will, or like viruses 
programs that we have, we just kind of made up, you know? Fear is just something that we made up. You know? Something we created for ourselves and, and for the, this whole planet, for this whole world, you know? So, anyway, this is over 10 minutes. I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna bugger off as they say in the UK. Uh, hope you're all doing well, like I said, and yeah, let me know how you guys are doing. Just comment down below, uh, reach out, whatever or not. Love y'all, peace.